and welcome to Traca, Girona Cycling Paradise. Today we're going to show you some fun facts about this cool city. And for that, we're going to contact a local guide that will show us around. So let's go see Anna. Hello. Can you tell us about a bit of yourself? Yes, yeah, sure. So, well, my name is Anna. I'm a guide here uh, in Girona, but also in Catalonia. And uh, we are going to walk around and I'm going to show you some of the most uh, interesting and uh, important places here in town that you cannot miss. Girona, is, uh, it's got a lot of history and a lot of very beautiful places to see. So right now we are standing on this bridge, which is the oldest bridge here in town. It, is, uh, it goes back to the year 1850. And uh, we are heading to the other one. As you can see, it's there in the far back. It is a red bridge. And that's the most iconic bridge here in town. And um, yes, uh, let's go over there. Next to the Eiffel Bridge, the red bridge, the most iconic bridge here in Girona. And I'd like uh, to show you a couple of places here. This is a sandwich store. And next door, there is a chocolate store. And even next door, there is an ice cream store. And all this is run by these three brothers that own this restaurant in town that's been rated the best in the world for many years. We are very fun of them, the Rocker Brothers. Show you this beautiful bridge here in Tirana, the most famous bridge, the Eiffel Bridge. Eiffel as the Eiffel Tower, yes. The same construction company that built the Eiffel Tower, built lots of bridges here in the area, lots of them related to the railway. And what's special about this one is that it's a walking bridge. And from the bridge, you get the best views from Girona. The colorful houses, of the Onya River, the cathedral, and a little bit lower down, another tower bell. So you can see that is St. Felix, the other big church here in Girona. A beautiful view. So let me tell you a few things about this bridge and about the Eiffel Construction Company. They have lots of business here in the area. And actually, the Eiffel Tower was first offered to Barcelona. But you know what? They turned it down, yes? To them, it didn't fit. Uh, it was a good, it was made of iron. It was a new thing. So finally, they ended up doing the Eiffel Tower for the international exhibition in Paris. But it was first offered to Barcelona. And uh, here in Girona, especially in the province and in the area, they built all, all these bridges. About this one. The photo you want to get, it is of the houses along the river, but including the bridge. The contrast between the stones and the iron. These colorful houses here, this is a fairly new uh, design. The thing is that all the houses, they were painted in gray color, not so fun. And in the 1980s, end of 1980s, beginning of the 1990s, the mayor of Girona said, well, let's make it nicer. And he hired these architects that were in charge of giving a new face to uh, the houses along the river. These architects, they were inspired by the city of Florence in Italy, Firenze. I don't know if you know about those houses along the Ponte Vecchio, but they took that as inspiration. So here we have it. Now, each one of the owners of the houses along the river could choose the color they wanted uh, among a limited number of colors, pastel colors, yes. So as you can see, all this line of different colors but if you keep on following you'll see that there is a house painted in white that outstands the rest that house they left it different because that's a museum that is a museum of a local art nouveau architect his name was rafael mazo so the eiffel bridge it is also called the old fish market bridge because back in the days they used to uh, sell uh, fish up on the bridge, yes? Uh -huh. Now, um, here we have a plate saying the year when it was built, which was 1877, and the price it cost, how much it cost. And it might, it might surprise you because it only cost 135 euros. Right now we are on the Girona Rambla, Rambla de Libertad. And down here it says Punta Trovada, which means in Catalan, meeting a point. And we have these kind of round things and I'm going to tell you what this represents. Now in Girona, the typical stone, the classic stone of Girona, it is a limestone and it's filled with little round things and all these round things, they seashells, fossilized onto the stone. The thing is that millions of years ago, this was the ocean. 
right? So the seashells, they just fossilize into the stone. And if you walk around or if you back around <laughs> and look, you'll see all these round things in all of the stones of Girona. Now, these round things down here, they actually represent these fossils, these seashells. And that is the meeting point, the meeting plains in Rambla, in the Rambla La Libertad. In Catalonia, there is lots of ramblas. A rambla, it is a, a word, a Arabic word, because in uh, Spanish and also in Catalan, we have these words that come from the Arabic language, yes? And rambla, it is actually rambli, which in uh, Arabic language, uh, it means a riverbed, a seasonal river. Now, underneath any rambla, this is what you have, a river that only carries water when it rains a lot. These ramblas, in the 19th century, they were covered and transformed into long squares. So underneath any rambla, this is what you have, a river. So right now we are standing on the chestnut square, chestnut. As you can see, there is a plate there and it says Plaza de las Castañas. Castañas means chestnut. Now, Girona, it is the capital of the whole province. And historically, the farmers of the province, they've come here uh, a day a week to sell their products, their produce. Now, each of the different squares that we have here in Girona's Old Quarter has the name of the product that they used to sell. In this case, in, on this square, they used to sell chestnuts, but we have the oil square, the grape square, the wine square, and so on. And in these old squares, you also have signs of, um, of years of when the houses were built. For instance, here it says 1687. And, but if you look down there, you'll see that above the arch, it says 1801. Yes. Through the centuries, people kept on building on top of, the, of, of what was there. Yes, so you find different centuries, different per periods within a same building. We are standing on the steps of San Domenac. Up there, you see there is a church, St. Martin. Behind that church, that's the Department of Education and Psychology of University of Girona. The university's got 26,000 students, so there is a lot of young people living here. And this is one of the most beautiful places, I think, of uh, Catalonia, but not only that, but I think of the world. It is just really nice to walk around, get lost in, uh, on these alleyways, these narrow streets. Uh, so follow me. So this corner here, the steps of San Domenac, they've inspired many movie producers, uh, TV series and advertising. So many things have been filmed here. And among all these things, Game of Thrones was filmed here as well. This happened to be Bravos uh, in the TV series. So now we are gonna get lost in these narrow streets. And all this was Bravos. Now we're walking uh, up these steps and we are going to discover the old Jewish quarter of Girona. The Jewish community that lived here during the medieval period, the Middle Ages, it was very outstanding. Doctors, philosophers, astronomers, and so on. Now the neighborhood, we call it Kol, C-A-L-L, Kai. And it's all filled with these very narrow streets, hardly any windows on the outside, but big courtyards on the inside. So we are going to get lost in this, and you cannot miss this while you're in Girona. Follow me. We are going up in uh, the cold Girona's old Jewish quarter, and all these narrow streets, they were actually in Game of Thrones. If you walk around, you may recognize some of the spots. Follow me, we're going up there, and you see this big tower and a big wall. Girona had three walls that were built throughout history. The first wall was built by the Romans. In fact, the Romans, during the Roman Empire, about 2,000 years ago, they were the first ones to get here and to build a settlement, a town. Yes? So, uh, they built a wall. We are going to see the remains of that wall. Then fast forward, another wall was built in the uh, 9th century, 800s, and that's part of that wall. So that was built in the 800s, and it's still in a really good state of conservation. They built some solid stuff back then. So right now we are standing on the Charlemagne wall. So this was built in the 800s. During the Charlemagne Empire, we're gonna be crossing one of the gates to that medieval Charlemagne town. 
and as you'll see, it was very thick. They built the town uphill, so it was easier for them to fight back in case they were invaded. And as we cross, we are going to bump, we are going to see this fly, this graffiti. Now, the symbol of Girona is the fly. In fact, in many souvenir stores, you'll see flies. And the story goes like this. <laughs> so the protector of Girona, it is uh, a saint called Narcisse. He lived here during the Roman Empire, so let's say almost 2,000 years ago. He introduced Christianity into town. He was killed. He was buried until in the year 1285, the French came down. We are very close to France, so we had lots of battles with the French. They came down, they opened Narcissus' tomb, and you won't believe what happened. <laughs> he stood up and an army of flies came out and attacked the French so hard that they had to pull back. And since then, Narcissus is the protector of the town and the symbol of Girona is the fly. So we are walking in the old medieval quarter and through the narrow alleyways and we are heading to the highest point of the old Girona where the three walls that were built came together and we have great views from there. We are up on the German gardens, one of the most beautiful places here in town. It is quite empty. In summer you can have like people playing the guitar, singing and so on. And this is the highest point of Girona. They call the German gardens because back in the days, these soldiers, these mercenaries, they were hired by the king to fight in case of any possible invaders, people coming, trying to get into Girona. So they were looking through their watchtowers. We have lots of watchtowers to control the town. So in these houses of the German mercenaries, we have these ruins. And if you follow me, I'll show you this little spot that it's been transformed into an outdoor theater. Now during the spring and summer, you can find like different place here, or you just can come here, read your book. It is a really nice place to come in town. So right now we are on the highest point of Girona, and here the three walls that were built throughout history, they came together. So as you can see on the lower left hand side, we have some very big stones. Those were built 2000 years ago by the Romans. And then you have other stones from the wall that was built in the 800s and the last wall that was built in the 1300s. So all of them came together here in the highest point. And now we're going to go up the wall to see the views, the amazing views from Girona from up there. Now we are standing on this wall, the Charlemagne wall, that was built in the 800s. Then the city kept on growing outside the walls and uh, to include these new neighborhoods outside the walls a new wall was built in the 1300s and that's the one you can see on the far back. If you walk along the wall for about two kilometers, you can just go around until the river, the Onya River. From up here, you see the new wall that was built in the 1300s and that church down there, that's the lecture hall of University of Girona and the main department of history and languages. So if you look down here, you'll see the classic stone, the typical stone of Girona, the limestone, and the, all these round white things. These are the seashells, the fossils that just stayed on the stone. And if you look around, you'll see them everywhere in the stones of Girona. So we are standing on the back of St. Mary's Cathedral. And here, this street is one of the most iconic places that appear in the Game of Thrones uh, series. If you turn around and have a look at this, you may recognize this place. It was the place where Arya Stark was blinded and she was begging for money. And then she was blind trained with the cathedral on the back. If you follow me, we're gonna access the French gardens because they used to belong to this French lady. And I'll show you one of the most important and iconic uh, things that we have here in Girona. It is the Witch of Girona. <laughs> it is just up there. You see there is a tower bell that was from the old cathedral, from the Charlemagne Cathedral, and up on the tower bell, on the wall, there is a gargoyle of the Girona witch. She's standing out, and the legend goes like this. Apparently, there was this lady that used to swear to God, and she used to throw stones to the cathedral. Now, God had enough, so he was like, okay, you're throwing stones, 
I'm going to transform you into a stone. So he placed her up there, facing down, and so when it rains, the only thing that would come out of her mouth would be water. Now we are up on the walls, and if you look through this kind of window frame, you'll see on the far back how the wall continues. And that whole mountain there, it is called Monjuek. Because back in the days, that was the place where the Jewish community used to bury their people. That was their cemetery. So Monjuik, it stands for Mount Jewish, Jewish mountain. So that's why it's called like that. Right now we are next to the Apostles' doorway of Gerona's Cathedral. And if you have a look, you'll see that on the doorway there are holes, but they're all empty. Back in the days, the 12 Apostles, these 12 religious men, they were on those holes. But during the Spanish Civil War, they were destroyed and they never rebuilt them. So that's why it looks empty. And these big esplanade, this square here, they never built anything here because back in the days, this was a cemetery. And if you have a look, you, see, you can still see the old tombs on the square. So that's why they never ended up building anything here. So come along, we are heading to the main door of Girona's Cathedral. The first people to build a religious building here were the Romans. 2,000 years ago, they built a temple, but that wasn't a Christian temple. Then eventually they built the first church and this is the last church they built. They started to build this in the late 1300s. They ended up building it at the beginning of the 1700s. So more than 300 years building the whole church. It was a big achievement because they chose to build the widest church in the world. These days, it is the second widest in the world. Only one church tops this one, and not, that, not for that much, and that is St. Peter of the Vatican. They just had to show off, so they, they built it a little bit wider, but otherwise, it's this one. On the steps of the cathedral, there is 90 steps that lead up to the main access doorway. This idea that the path up to heaven is hard and you have to work your way up. This is a popular place here in Girona. Uh, where during the festivities they build this um, tower, human tower, very typical here in Catalonia, and they walk up all the way to the door. Also, there is this race, running race, to see who runs up the fastest. On the steps of the cathedral, there was this guy that came up with his jeep, his car, and he actually made it up all the way up. And for so long, they didn't know who that was. Finally, he was caught, but he made it all the way up. And that's why some of the, of the steps they broken. Um, he had to pay for uh, the repair of them. You see the tower bell of St. Felix, and also a big park on the far back. That's the Devesa Park. Girona's uh, Central Park. It is huge, it is big. That's where the festivities, the parties take place, also the market. When they film Game of Thrones, besides filming Bravos, this kingdom, on the steps of the cathedral, there was King's Landing. So it may ring some bell in your head if you have watched the series. The High Sparrow was standing here when Jamie Lannister came to rescue Queen Marjorie. And this was the whole set. Now, the thing is that in King's Landing, on the far back, there is the ocean. So they had to Photoshop all that. But for the rest, it was just perfect for as a set. Right now, we are on the footsteps of Girona's Cathedral. And back in the days, when the Romans first came here, this was their public square, their forum. And actually, the Romans came here because this very important trading road called Augustus Way went by here. And this Augustus Way was actually this street that you see that goes up there and it continues down there. This road connected Rome following the Mediterranean coast all the way to the southern part of Spain in the current city of Cadiz. So the Romans set out along the road to protect it, but also to provide for people that were doing the trade. And here they built a fortification, a military kind of like settlement. Eventually kept on growing, so it became a town. Now they built it uphill because it was easier for them to fight back. 
and down here this was one of the main gates to the Roman town. So as we cross the gate you'll see the, the original stones from the Roman wall. So have a look, you, do you see these big stones? These were put here by the Romans, very big stones. And actually this stone is different than the one that you have here. This is not a local stone, this was, this was taken from far away. Whether this one is the classic Gerona stone with all the seashells, the fossils. Okay, so this is the old Roman road, Via Augusta, Augusta's Way. That was one of the main gates and look how massive this wall is with the towers, very defensive. This was one of the main gates to the town. So only few people could get in, only people that lived there. It was a control spot. So right now we are outside of these walls and we are going to walk around here and we are going to see the famous Arab baths. But as a sauna kind of like a business that was open outside the gates because they, people would get naked in there and inside the gates they didn't want any naked business so they were open outside the gates. These were medieval baths that were open and worked as saunas thousand years ago and they have an amazing state of conservation. So behind me we have this monument called the Arab Baths. They were built about thousand years ago and they worked as saunas. People would pay an entry fee and there were different rooms with different temperatures. There was a hot room, a mild temperature room, a cold room and a changing room. And everybody would use them, all separated though. Women these days, men the other days, Jewish these days, Christians the other days. And they were called the Arab baths. They are called the Arab baths, not because they were built by the Arabs, but because they follow the typical structure of a, uh, an Arabic bath system or a sauna. Like it would be a hammam, steam room. We are standing on Jewry Square, Plaza del Jurad, and this background appear also in Game of Thrones. There was a theater, and that was the, the background for the theater. Right now, up there, we have the Modern School of Music. And just over there, there is a bridge that connects to uh, St. Peter's Monastery, St. Peter's of Gaigan Monastery. And on that bridge, also uh, scenes from Game of Thrones were filmed. Arya Stark, the famous character from Game of Thrones, was standing on that bridge and she got stuck. Next to us, this is St. Peter's Monastery, San Pedro de Galligan's Monastery. Benedictine monks used to live here. Eventually it was empty, and right now this is the Archaeological Museum of Catalonia. And down there, there is a little church. That was the church of the community that lived here back in the days. There were the tanners, these men that cut and colored leather. This process of producing leather doesn't smell too good. So they were, they were living just outside the city walls. So they were living in this whole area here next to the monastery. Here behind us we have these very big pointy trees, they cypress trees, and in order for them to grow this tall, you have to trim them with a crane, otherwise they would grow sideways. The first ones to trim them, they were the Romans. If you would find some of these trees along the Roman road, it meant things. It meant that you could stop for a drink, it meant that you could stop for a drink and food, or drink and food and sleep. Eventually, the Christian world took them as an inspiration, as a symbol of the connection between the earth and the heaven. So the more they would grow tall, the more connected with God. And now it just became, it is one of the landmarks here in, uh, in Girona and in the area. We are on the fly street, Carrera de las Moscas, and as you can see, there are all these flies on the wall because actually the protector of Girona, Narcisse, used to live here and he did this miracle with the flies, right? So that's why they name it this way, the fly street. Here you have an image of the protector of Girona, Narcisse, with his pointy hat. Apparently he was a bishop and he's surrounded by all these flies. And this represents his foot. Now they say that if you touch his footprint, you'll be lucky. Look, this is St. Felix Church. It's very impressive, very monumental, very big. Um, 
this is one of the access doorways to it, but actually the main one is through the side and it looks very defensive because for so long this was just outside the walls. So in order to prevent people getting in, that's why it looked like a fortress. Okay, so we are next to this very famous column in Girona. Uh, this is a replica. The original one is in the Girona Art Museum and it goes back 2000 years ago. And if you have a look up there, there is a scared animal. That is the famous Girona lioness. And the tradition says that if you touch and kiss her bud, you'll be back in town. It actually rhymes in Catalan and Spanish. Si li fas un petó al cul de la lleona, tornaràs a Girona. If you kiss the lioness bud, you'll be back in Girona. And the tradition started a thousand years ago. People started to climb up and kiss the bud of the lioness, and it went on and on and on until the coronavirus and then they decided no more bad kissing <laughs> and actually that's what the sign says you are not allowed to kiss the lioness bud now next to it you have this plate with a representation of the lioness and people started to rub that so that's why it looks so shiny <laughs> okay so it's been a pleasure guiding you in Girona I hope you enjoy these different places make sure you don't miss them or just discover some of them and I hope you'll be back. Yeah, thank you, Anna, for these fun facts. I think everybody now knows a bit more of Girona, all the facts and all the history that has around, and hope everybody enjoys, and we'll be back, no? Yeah, please, come back. Please.